Hello, everyone. Aaron Dale here. Good to see you. This is the second segment of harmonizing three parts, a triad harmony over top of a walking bass. We did some last time. Today, we're going to look at a song called An Errand Boy for Rhythm, written, performed by Nat King Cole Trio. And it's a barbershop arrangement. So we're looking at three part harmony harmonized over a walking bass in the middle of a barbershop song. So we're probably going to get into a little bit of trouble today, a little bit of musical trouble. It's a jazz song. It's a quick swing song, uh, however you want to categorize it. It came about right before the rhythm and blues started kicking in and rock and roll era kicked in. Nat King Cole Trio rec recorded a lot of music like this. It's just fun stuff. And so there's a lot of opportunities for this kind of walking bass with harmony on top. So let's check it out. So I'm gonna start by playing uh, part of my learning track recording up to where we're gonna talk about it. The bass part has this kind of back and forth right around the circle feel. Starting to hear more of that in the 40s, late 40s, leading into the 50s of early rhythm and blues and rock and roll music where you're getting that, that kind of rock and roll sound of. So here's the clip. Come to me if you want to swing and shout. I'll get your kicks and get about. I'm an errand boy for rhythm. Come on, send me. Just send me the doo doo. Just get hip and follow through. I'll deliver straight to you. I'm an errand boy for rhythm. Now you've got to send me. You can always find me down at Smoky Joe's. Joe's. And that's where all the hip and groovy people go. Ticket boy. So you heard what I was initially talking about. How the bass parts moving right around. So I like to think about the groove and the groove of the rhythm for the entire piece, but also the harmonic rhythm, the harmonic groove. Like I said, that bass part moves around pretty quick. I started with that because I wanted to hear that underneath everything. Then you can put your other parts on top and try to make it work. And if you have to alter change a bass note or whatever out of this pattern, you shift it around to make it work. But that's what I started with. So that's just one little bass trick getting into this. And then when we get into the section where the bass is literally walking, all of the stuff before that was pretty homophonic. So all the way up to right here, it's homophonic. And then we get into this part that's gonna be about four measures of walking bass underneath with three part harmony on top. To send me, you can always find me down at Smoky Joe's. Joe's and that's where all the hip and groovy people go. To get boy, ba -dum -dum. It's only really about three measures, four measures, of, it's four measures of, of walking bass. So that's a simple bass line that's uh, right in the, the E major triad. And then we start to fill in these chords on top. Look at the part here at C, you're gonna see the bass walking up. Great cross on E. This is great because We've got a solid one or root of that chord, that E major chord. So it's going to be pretty simple to fill in these chords above that walking bass with the with the lead going. I play that. And the triad is nice and clean on top. So you're going to hear this sound on top. Just play the top three parts. So that's pretty barbershop sounding. That triad, the baritone is on the five here, if you notice. So the baritone, since the lead is straight across from the E for most of this, the baritone has a little 
uh, fluctuation here that can go up and down to the five, to the six, to the seven. So the that E is always there. So as this E in the bass walks up, the baritone is going to move up and fill in the chord wherever the bass note goes. And you just try to make sure you get four part chords or triads either way and try to avoid having a you know an empty chord. So I first have this as an open and then it's displaced by an eighth note. That's fine. And then I have this dum here on beat three is gonna be the basis of and always everyone jumps up to that D to fill in seventh of the chord. And then the bass goes back down. So it's nice and easy. The tenor can pop up and fill in this five up here on the top. It goes by so quick in the song, you don't even notice those sevenths in there. So quick. And then right back to a major chord here at 30, because it's going by so fast, it doesn't have to have a seventh in there. Also because E is moving right down to D, you're going to get the seventh in the bass there. So the bass is, dum, dum, there's your seventh. And now that baritone moves and shifts around to match up and fill in the chord with the bass. Now there's a rub between the D and the C sharp here briefly, but it's so quick that you don't notice it. You, you kind of hear this pattern in the baritone. That move. And then this next chord is kind of a jumped out cross the clock thrown in chord. The idea is where am I going at this next measure 31? The bass is going dum 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 ba dum da dum dum dum. Then I can fill in the chord. Maybe there's a seventh I can use that if it's gonna lift a half step in the bass from the G sharp to an A, it's kind of a leading tone into that um, that sixth chord. So what can I do? Can I put a seventh on that whole leading tone chord? Okay. So the chord works, you can fill it in. But instead of going up in the lead part, it goes down to the B. So that's how I'm filling it in. I'm looking for opportunities where the lead can match up with the bass that's walking and create chords on top that make sense and sound like barbershop or triads. So since I put this across the clock, G sharp, A flat seven, in there, the baritone has to go. So that's the, six, seven right here, Smokey Joe's. So if you notice then, right here, I don't quite fill in all of these chords with full four part chords and barbershop sevenths or full triads. So it's a little empty and I just took a chance, decided to take the risk that it was okay because the top three parts are gonna sing Smokey Joe's so quick and they're going to get to that Joe chord, Smokey Joe, that these other two chords aren't going to matter. Not that they don't matter, but we're not going to hear them. We're going to hear the word Smokey. And then the bass will be driving that measure. So you hear. So if I play right there, I get. C sharp doubled here in the baritone and the bass. Normally you wouldn't do that, but it's so quick. So you're missing the fifth in there. 
but comes right back here and you get the nine, the dominant nine with the five and the E. And then it moves up. And again, I took a quick risk to allow this F sharp to be in there, which is not A4. Naturally, the A7 wouldn't have a F sharp in it. You don't want to have that six kind of sound. But it goes by so quick, I'm listening to the pattern is what I'm looking for. So I'm listening to what the bass is singing as an echo. That's Smokey Joe's. And you don't notice the dissonance because it's so quick. You're hearing the lyric. And then the rest of it coming out of that is four parts. So playing that from C one more time, you can hear it in tempo. You can always find me down at Smokey Joe's. One reason it feels okay is because everything before it was solid four part chords. So this walking bass, you still feel like it's barbershop because it's not taking you too far away and you're not feeling nervous about it. So before we stop here, let's listen to the source material. This was taken from Nack and Cole, who had his trio, the Nack and Cole trio, and they recorded the song, an Aaron Boy for rhythm. But I discovered this great artist, Diana Crawl from Canada, and she recorded uh, this entire CD of just songs that Nack and Cole had done. And so I found her recording and I loved it because it know, did a few little different things and maybe it was a little quicker than what Nack and Cole did. So I worked from this, and here's that section we just heard. Aaron, girl for rhythm, send me. You can always find me down at Smokey Joe's. That's where all the hip and groovy people go. It's got that feel. It's about the same tempo. That's what I was going for. No tricks about it. Just trying to match up the feel and the groove that I heard from Diana Crawl's recording. And that's all for this one. I have two more I'll share in this little group of examples of triad harmony on top of a walking bass. Do that another time. Until then, see you soon. <laughs>